Hello friends, we've known each other for a little while where I'd like to think we're in the trust tree. If I was to tell you about an experience with a particular camera, but I wasn't allowed to show you any images from said camera, you'd still trust me, right? Assuming that you responded with a yes, then I think we can continue. Shrouded in the greatest veil of secrecy was my three hour jaunt with the brand new R6 Mark II. Canon has allowed me to show you the camera, the menus, and the live screen. But due to this camera being a very pre-production sample, it is strictly verboten to show you any photos or videos from this camera. So again, trust tree. This video is a primer on the new R6 Mark II and what differences you can expect over the original version. There are 24 new features in total and I tested many of them alongside the original R6. I'm not gonna cover them all today, but here's a highlight reel of what I found along with my thoughts. First up is resolution. Photo resolution gets a bump from 20.1 megapixels to 24.2 megapixels and the 4K video now comes from a 6K sensor versus 5K of the R6. I had to zoom in significantly to really start to see a difference in the photos. Until about a 250% crop, there was really little perceivable difference. For me, this isn't as big of a deal in terms of an upgrade, but it does bring the camera's resolution in line with other mid-range cameras on the market. With the video resolution, in certain situations, I felt like I could see a difference, but globally speaking, I could not. Next up is autofocus AI. In my experience, Canon really dominates the market when it comes to autofocus. This may change with Sony's new AI on their A7R5, but we've yet to test that. For me, Canon has been way ahead of the pack starting from really their 1DX Mark III. It's only getting better in this camera with the introduction of AI-driven autofocus. There are as well some tracking upgrades that include cars and animals. To test this, I spent some time roadside tracking some automobiles. This was the first instance where I really noticed a difference between the Mark II and the original. With the Mark II, every single car in 99% of the shots was tack sharp, even at F2. With the R6, that number was at best about 50%. The only real negative thing I noticed was how the rolling shutter performance on the R6 Mark II was noticeably poorer than I expected. I'm only saying this because the last Canon experience I had was with the R5C, which has virtually no rolling shutter, and the camera was amazing handheld. The Mark II was a bit more herky-jerky, and really, just like the original R6, is only good handheld if you're being very careful with your movements. For video users, the Mark II now offers full 6K RAW through an external recorder. I couldn't test this, but it was a much asked for feature from Canon users, and I'm sure it's going to be one of, if not the sole key reason that people will be buying this camera over the original R6. There are some other small but important upgrades to video modes. High frame rates, for example, now go up to 180p in HD, 4K, however, is still throttled to 60p, but the biggest upgrade that will excite users is that the video is no longer locked to 30 minutes. 4K can now roll for up to six hours and high frame rates for well over an hour. Wrapping up the topic of video, users of the Mark II will now also benefit from internal false color like that of the R5C. Design and usability is another big reason to consider the upgrade. The body size and shape remains identical to the R6. However, the top has been redesigned with its own dedicated photo video switch, which means that you can now assign video modes to the custom menu functions. This is great if you say need to switch between frame rates or focus modes very quickly. The camera now operates as a standalone UVC UAC compliant webcam. That means no software or drivers are required and it also passes through audio, which means that it's going to really clean up your streaming setup and operation. There is a great pre-roll feature in both photo and video, fantastic feature for those who shoot wildlife or sports. The pre-roll in photos is relegated to raw only, and in video, you can select between three or five second pre-roll so you never miss a key moment. There are a host of new features that you will surely be able to read about, but for me, these were the ones that really stood out and that I could test with some degree of certainty. A reminder though that my experience is based on a pre-production sample and some things may be different with the full production version. To wrap up, I wanna to speak to who I think this camera is for. This is really a brilliant content creator camera and I think it's a perfect camera for someone who's maybe looking at their first full frame hybrid camera. 
it's at the right price point, and the image quality is as great as other R models. It's easier to use than the original, and powerful enough to not outlive its usefulness when users are tasked with more demanding shoots. We hope to get a production model in the future to really parse out these new features, but until then, thank you so much for trusting me with your time today. And as always, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. For me, for now, for today, I'm out. Peace.